What's up guys, Daniel Cormier here, sitting with El Patron, the UFC boss, Dana White. Boss, how you doing? What's up, buddy? Good, good. Another fight week, big fight week. Yep. I mean, does this ever start, the excitement, does the excitement ever kind of wane when you get in these types of fights, knowing that we're going into a packed arena like T-Mobile? Yeah, no, especially this year. You know, we've sold out every event that we've done this year, um, and going into this one, we're about to break the pay-per-view record, the all-time pay-per-view record. Um, you know, obviously the card's stacked with killer fights. You know, everything that encompasses this event, I'm excited yeah. about. So I love breaking records. I love, you know, uh, taking the sport and the business to new levels. And this is, this is what it's all about for me. Yeah, from the good, the bad, the ugly losses, the beautiful wins. Now they both find themselves, Charles is the champion, and Dustin finally challenging for that belt. Um, what does a fight like this mean to not only the guys in it Saturday, but people watching that may not have had the best start to their UFC careers? Yeah, no, there's been a, a killer buzz around this fight and this card, um, and a lot of people excited about the main event. And it's good to see a, a guy like Oliveira and a guy like Poirier finally get their dues. Some guys have the fast track, like... For example, O'Malley's on the card. Yeah. You know, this kid came off the Contender Series and blew up immediately. And then you got guys like Oliveira and Poirier who've had to grind it out for years um, to finally get the recognition that they deserve. And, you know, that's definitely happening this Saturday night. People are excited for the fight. So when you see a guy like Dustin get those McGregor fights, right? And so many questions. Why go to the McGregor fight when you could be fighting for the championship after the first one? But then you look at his profile. It looks like the guy has just kind of jumped leaps and bounds since that fight. Is it, if he gets the job done on Saturday, and I know we can't pick fights, neither of us, can it get even bigger for him? Because it seems as though his star is shining so bright after sharing the cage with McGregor that I don't know how it gets bigger and better. Yeah, but it does, because what happens is, you know, I, I, he got a lot of criticism for that, for taking the yeah, no. fight. I said he was absolutely dead on. That's exactly what he should have mm -hmm. done. It was the right move. You, you, you go after those big fights when they're there because you never know what's going to yeah. happen. And he did that, and now the title's sitting there waiting for him mm -hmm. to, you know, to, to, to come and grab it. And, uh, and here we are in this big fight. Now, should he win on Saturday night, you know, McGregor saying, I'll be back this summer. I'm coming right after the belt. And, you know, who knows who's going to be next in here and... You know, you always have to take these fights when they're yeah. there. This room is crazy. It's the first time I've ever been in here. Now, let me tell you something. I wish I came up in this bitch when I was on top of two of them. Because for a while, I was the man, right? Yeah, right. Heavyweight, light heavyweight. Both of those rankings, that was meal and pound for pound. So, y'all better put some damn respect on my name. I'll try to tell y'all right now. This is the room where it all happens, man. Yeah. This is where we sit and we make all the fights and <laughs> we lay out. You know, we're already up to, uh, you know, making fights for April 9th. That's so right now. crazy. That's so crazy. Now, Charles Oliveira is a guy that kind of doesn't get the respect that he deserves. But how can you how can you not respect this man when he has more submissions than anybody in UFC history? And that left hook he landed on Michael Chandler was the cleanest left hook I've ever seen in the UFC. Technical. How are people still overlooking this dude as Poirier enters the fight a favorite and almost universally considered the best lightweight in the world, which is crazy? Yeah. Well, it's happening now, you know. If you look at what Poirier went in and did the big Connor fight, mm -hmm. he's definitely getting the shine off that fight. Yeah. And then now you make this fight here, and if Oliveira beats Poirier, it's the rub. You know, it just it just all starts to happen, you know. Yeah. Um. And, and and people do start to take notice now of all the records that he's broken here yeah. in the UFC as the promotion leads up to this fight. Um. Yeah. This 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 is how it happens. Like I said, it takes longer for some guys than it does others, but. For Poirier and, and Oliveira, this weekend's a big weekend for both of them. It's a massive weekend. Now in the co-main event, or the co-headliner, as it's called, the GOAT Amanda Nunes. I mean, how how many times can Amanda do something to up the ante? But in Juliana Pena, she's been calling for this thing for a long time. And truly, and dude, all week, Juliana has carried this triple. She's not afraid one bit. She's nasty. She is an absolute dog and wants to take the fight to Amanda Nunes. How do you have that approach against Amanda, and what can Amanda do to really raise the level that she's already at? Juliana's tough as hell. I, she I is. love it. You know, I was just telling the story the other day. 
you know, she, she, she got in some trouble a couple years ago. She got in a fist fight with a bouncer somewhere. <laughs> she got in a fist fight with a bouncer. She's not afraid of anybody. And she picked a fight yeah. with, 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 with a nasty she opponent. Did. And she's going to get it on Saturday. That, that's going to be a fight. And I love the fact that Juliana has the mental toughness to call her out, say that she's been ducking her. You know, Amanda's pissed and Amanda cannot wait to fight Juliana Pena. But, you know, everything that's led up to this, to this Saturday... It's going to make Saturday very fun. Yeah, it will. And title fights are on the line. And one question I wanted to ask you, I asked about if it wanes for you in terms of the big fight feel. But that moment when you put that belt around someone's waist, like I know what it feels like to the athlete. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when they would say my name, and you almost like are, you're waiting for that moment for the belt to get strapped around your waist, and that little pat that you give us on the back. Does that still feel as special today as it did when you first started doing it? Yeah, no, it's 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 incredible. I mean, it, it, if you think about it, um, all the fights and all the the titles and all the belts that I've slapped around yeah. places, you know, it's such a huge honor. Two it two is. of the greatest honors that I have in in being involved in this sport. Number one is standing up on stage at the stare downs. It's it's one of my favorite mm -hmm. things, other than the fight. My most favorite, other than the fight, and the second is strapping that that belt around a champion's waist it's it's fucking incredible it's an amazing honor and it's something that i've enjoyed for 20 years as the athlete it's almost like a relief right you have reached the mountaintop because there's nothing better i i, I said this people talk about money fights and all that but it's always been about the belt right it's always been about the belt and i can see your enjoyment in doing that and i know that the athlete uh always appreciates it i was actually mad when rumble did it the first time when rumble took the belt right. when you put it on me i was yeah. like the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, what were you, why did you give him the fucking belt, man? Why did you give him the belt? He wanted to do it. You know what I mean? He wanted to do it. What am I, what am I going to fucking get a fight with him? <laughs> he just got submitted, right? Like, yo, he's at yeah. his weakest in this moment. You know, he, 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 he was going to get submitted and get a knockout <laughs> on the same fucking night. I was, I was knocked me out. <laughs> but, but <clears throat> shit, what was I going to just say to you? Uh, 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 something about, oh, yeah. When you were talking about, it's, it's always about the belt. One of the things, and you and I have had this conversation before when, when you won the belt, you know, and, and people don't realize until they get it. Mm -hmm. One, you know, er, er, the money comes it once does. the belt comes. Yes. And, and the belt is the key to open everything. everything. Your entire life changes once you are the UFC heavyweight champion. Oh. Um, you know, the amount of people that are coming after you, the amount of doors that it opens for sponsorship and other cool things. People don't realize, unless you become a world champion, what it's like. And it's insane, right? Like, light heavyweight champion to heavyweight champion is even a difference. Like, there's mm -hmm. actually a difference when you become the heavyweight champ post to the light heavyweight champ. So, how is this thing still getting bigger? Boss, I mean, I do shows for ESPN and on ESPN Plus, a platform that's been essentially built by the UFC. Um, everything we do is highest rated, most watched. How is this, how is the UFC continuing to grow even today, when every year it seems like you guys just raised the bar. Every year, we beat the year before. Yeah. Since the day we started, you know, it's 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 pretty crazy, and you know, obviously the the massive growth in the last couple of years is because we went through COVID. Mm -hmm. We 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 brought in a lot of new fans, a lot of new eyeballs that that had never even tried to watch the UFC before, um, and as we go into different territories now, and I think just streaming. Is going to take this thing to a whole nother level over the next five years. Um, yeah, and, and I have some big announcements. One I was going to hopefully make this year, but it didn't work out. I didn't get the deal done in time. And then obviously all the things that we're doing around here to take the yeah. sport. I mean, look at the look at the uh, the apex. What the apex? Has yeah, done. that's what I was going to say. Like, what's the apex mean? Like, I, can I say something? All right, now you might say. Just like Dominic Cruz said, I don't prepare. You might try to call me lazy. Because I don't mind the apex. I don't mind flying from San Jose an hour flight coming to the apex and calling fights. Like, is you don't this mind going back the apex? On the how, about, how about the contender series starts at 5 o'clock, yeah. but the first punch isn't thrown until, you know, maybe 5, 12, 5, 13. Yeah. So at 5 o'clock, I get up from my office, I drive into across the street and go right into the apex. It's it's the best thing that could ever happen, but I, I, I um, it, it's just like 
sitting at home in your underwear <laughs> and doing a fucking Zoom call for work. It's awesome and it's it's great to do, but it's not the right thing to do. It's not what we should be doing. What we need to do is we need to get back out on the road. We need we need to go to you know Wichita and yeah. You know, Sioux Falls, in places it's, like Raleigh, Sioux Falls, yeah. exactly, and go to these places with fight nights and let people experience the live event. Um, it needs to be done, but it's not going to be done until, and we're only going to go to states that are easy to do events in. I'm not yeah. going to jump through all these hoops and play all these crazy bullshit yeah. games that a lot of these people are playing right now. You know, I always try to explain what a UFC fight feels like to people, like the energy, like those those title fights, like that that octagon like moves, yeah. but now as I'm sitting next to the octagon side, I still feel that same energy and it builds all night. The DJ builds the energy all the way through. So when you're sitting there for a UFC main event, like what are you feeling, right? As you're sitting next to all your friends and the people that mean the most to you, like what are you feeling? Well, there's most? a there's a lot of shit that goes on for me, you know, on, on on fight night. You know, we have tons of sponsors that come back to my room. People that I have to, uh, you know, take care of that night. Um, you know, you want to make sure you want to show everybody a great time. And then, you know, the production has to be perfect. The fights have to be great. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys have to deliver too uh, on the commentary and, and the fighter interviews. So there, there's so much shit that I deal with the night of a fight. Um, I'm always happy when it's over and it went well and, you know. Uh, and nobody gets hurt. You know what's crazy? It's like there's this idea that you're always nice to me, and but tell them I get judged if I do something wrong on television. If I'm not doing shit the right way, you'll tell me. Everybody, like, everybody, like it's not everybody. it's not always like peaches I'm, and I'm, rainbows. Our, our our guy who produces the show gets hammered <laughs> all fucking night by me with little details that I see that you know most people probably don't even notice, but mm -hmm. to me it, it's a big deal. So I always want. The production to be flawless and to be perfect and to be the best that we can be so yeah I'm, I'm hammering everybody all night how are you still so like involved with every aspect of everything even as the sport continues to grow and the production gets bigger and everything still gets bigger well what happens is a lot of people haven't been here to this you know to the UFC headquarters here the apex next door the PI um, you know this this business there's a lot of different a lot of different revenue streams. We got the video game, which kills it. We got yeah. um, merchandise, which kills it. We got sponsorship. We have, uh, you know, the list goes on and on of, of all of the, if you focus on the three things, you know, the live event production, the, uh, the in-house production, mm -hmm. and the fights. Yeah. And, f and cultivating new talent. You can't fuck this thing up. Yeah. You can't fuck it up, but it's easy to get caught up in all the other shit that goes on in here yeah. that doesn't even matter if I don't take care of those three things. Yeah, people are going. So those like, are the three things that I stay absolutely focused on all the time. People are moving around. There's so many moving parts to a UFC event. Now, earlier you said Conor McGregor said that he will want to walk back into a title fight, but to people out there who say Conor McGregor should have to fight contenders to work his way back up to the title. You know, Ryan Clark told me that Bill Cowher said to him, and I think this is the most true statement from a guy like in your position or a head coach in a football team. He told him in regards to Ben Roethlisberger and all those guys, Antonio Brown, I will treat everybody fairly, but I won't treat everybody the same. People can't expect everybody to be treated the same, right? So does Conor McGregor, as the biggest star in the sport, have a shorter path to a championship fight? And if so, why, is, why would it seem unjust? It doesn't seem unjust to me as a guy that understands a game like that. Yeah, that's true and not true. I mean, if you look right now at the rankings, Conor McGregor is ranked number nine in the world. Mm -hmm. So who the hell knows what this thing's going to look like by the time he comes back? Mm -hmm. um, so I couldn't honestly answer that question. Will okay. Conor McGregor get a title fight? No, I'm not saying right no, away. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And, and, and listen, Lorenzo and I went to dinner the other night, and we were talking about a lot of things. And one of the things that Lorenzo was saying, and I've said it publicly a million times, Conor McGregor literally would fight anybody. Yeah, he always when, has. I'm telling you, when, when we started this thing, and this guy was on his rise, and believe me, I've, I've dealt with a fucking thousand fighters. So, oh, th this isn't the right fight for me at this time. This isn't that. This isn't this. This fucking kid, we've been in the house that he was renting. Mm -hmm. 
And when, when, when I think it was when Jose fell out, and then he fought, uh, he fought the kid from uh, Alpha Male, the exactly. wrestler, Chad Mendez. He exactly. fought Chad Mendez. Exactly. He literally, this is what he said to us: "I don't give a fuck who you get. <laughs> I'm going to work out. When you figure it out, call me and let me know." Really? Yeah. And then the Nate Diaz fight. You know, you, you know, another fight fell out for him. He said, "Well, let's fight Diaz." Well, do you want to do? No, I don't want to catch weight. If I fight, if I don't fight him at his weight, it doesn't matter. It's bullshit. Yeah. If I don't fight him at his weight, you know, I want to fight him at his. Conor McGregor has been that guy since the day he walked into this fucking company. So for anybody to to point the finger and say, "Oh, this guy's getting special treatment," this guy, this guy's special. Mm -hmm. This guy's fucking special. <laughs> you know how many fighters I fucking dealt with that'll talk to me about. This isn't good for my brand. Is this I'm not fighting my friends. <laughs> I'm not fucking well, doing you gotta, this. You gotta, you, me, I did, remember when I was, I don't want to fight Kane, I went to yeah. 205. Yeah. Right? And people always say that. Like, it's like crazy because when you play the game, like, stuff happens. Now, is this what's happening with Hamzat right now? People won't fight him because Neil Magny seems to want to fight him. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. sounds like that. And, and that's unfair for me to say because that is true. Neil Magny will take that fight today. Yeah. yeah. Neil Magny will fight the guy. Yep. All right. Well, before I let you go, I got one question. We're in New York City, <laughs> the Mecca, the grand Mecca Madison Square Garden. It's main event time. It's time to get your popcorn. I get a text message from Sissy telling me he's taking a picture. I say he, who's he? You're taking a fucking picture of me with my popcorn. So you don't like popcorn at the main event? Popcorn's great. <laughs> the guy who's calling the fucking fight is sitting over there putting his mute button on so they can shove fucking popcorn in his mouth well, during the, the main well, event. Listen, the and, and it's coming off. You were fucking bummed out that they got you stuffing food in your mouth at the, the basketball, basketball game. game. Exactly. I'm getting way too many pictures eating me. What is going on with me? She's like, he's taking a picture. I'm like, who? And I look over and it's you with your damn phone. Like, you got so much shit going on. What do you got time to take yeah, a picture yeah. of me for? Because I was fucking blown away when I looked over to the right and I saw you like this. Shoving <laughs> popcorn in your mouth while you're calling the fight. Seven hours. We don't eat after yeah. we start calling those fights. It's a fantastic job. Boss, thank you so much for joining me, man. UFC 269 this weekend. Make sure you guys tune in, like, subscribe. But buy the pay-per-view. I mean, come on. Some great fights uh, from T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, and we'll see you guys next time.